everyone. I would like to welcome all of you to our mask ultrasound, ultrasound Zoom meeting tonight with one of our famous uh, neurologists from Indonesia. And I met her way back, uh, maybe, maybe two, three years ago. And uh, since the time I've, that I've known her, I have seen her to be very interested in doing so many things with regards to pain and special ultrasound. So if you look at his curriculum vitae now, uh, shown here in the PowerPoint, I will just read uh, some of them. There's a lot of them. So he is an, a medical doctor, a neurologist by profession, and also a PhD, and also a fellowship in pain management uh, from Singapore General Hospital, and a doctorate degree in neuroscience, University of Gajah Mada, and also a fellowship in musculoskeletal ultrasound in National Taiwan University, and a CIPS of the World Institute of Pain, and a professor of neurology, medical faculty, Sia Kuala University. So if you look at the medical experience, there's just a lot of them. I will not try to read all of them. And uh, he has, she has written a lot of articles, both national and international. And uh, it's enough for me to introduce to you one of our friend, one of our colleague from Indonesia, Dr. Desi Rakmawati Emril. But before we turn over the time to her, let's just pause for a moment for a short prayer. Let us pray. Our loving Father in heaven, we come before your presence. We thank you for this opportunity that we can listen to Dr. Emril discuss about the new concept in pan management for cancer. I would like, Lord, to ask for your guidance, for your wisdom to be upon her tonight, that we may learn and experience your presence. Thank you for your goodness and your grace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So Dr. Desi Emril, it's all yours now. Thank you so much, Dr. Yeah. Castro. And I would like to say hello to Dr. Fass and Dr. Siebert Tan. <clears throat> For today, uh, I would like to share and discuss about the new concept in uh, cancer pain management. In our uh, uh, country, we know that uh, the pain is still a uh, common problem and for the cancer pain we still have to struggle for the management of the cancer pain uh, especially for the advanced cancer staging About one third of patients uh, with uh, cancer pain actually do not receive appropriate analgesic for their pain. So it means maybe from the 100 of cancer pain patients, maybe about 30 patients uh, don't have a good pain relief because of their uh, cancer pain. <clears throat> Actually, uh, the cancer pain, it is a complex uh, neurophysiology uh, process. It involves inflammatory, neuropathic, ischemic, and compression <clears throat> at the multiple sites according to the, uh, the primary tumor and for according to the site of the metastatic process. Uh, the important thing is we have to know and recognize the mechanism of pain that happened to our patient. And after that, we can decide what mm -hmm. kind of meds that we have to give to the patient. Actually, uh, the patient with cancer pain has more than one type of the pain. We know that... Uh, Pain is the most common symptoms of 
patient with advanced cancer it's about 42 percent very high it means almost all of the patient with the advanced cancer will have the pain and the pain uh, the intensity is moderate to severe so there is no um, uh, slight pain for the patient with the cancer pain it it will be the um, moderate to severe pain so we can imagine how uh, how devastating the patient with the cancer pain ah. <clears throat> for the cancer pain 50 percent of patient with the cancer will have the cancer pain and for the advanced staging almost 80 percent of the patient has the cancer pain 50 percent patient have a moderate to severe pain but according to our uh, research it is about uh, 80 percent patient with uh, will have the moderate to severe pain especially for the advanced cancer patient but from the literature, it said that 30% patient will have severe pain. So uh, before we go to the mechanism and treatment of the cancer pain, we should know about the barriers to optimal effective of cancer pain treatment. Number one is pain assessment. Sometimes we just ask the patient, how much your score your pain score oh it's 10 it's 9 and then we will give the the medicine we just follow the uh we uh, h w h o step ladder severe pain we have morphine strong morphine or strong opioid uh moderate pain we will give the uh, weak opioid and some adjuvant that's what the rule that actually uh the doctors um oven uh oven use for the treatment but actually uh pain assessment is very very important we don't we just not know how much the score but we also have to know uh what kind of pain the patient have then what is the mechanism and uh inadequate assessment is really really make the patient will fall in the unsuccessful pain treatment pain assessment should take place at regular interval so it doesn't mean today we ask the uh we do the assessment in the morning and then we do in the tomorrow morning but we should do the assessment regular in regular interval it can be every one hour every four hour every eight hours and etc yeah every we give the medicine we have to follow the patient and record how much the pain score maybe we give the tramadol and then for one hour the next one hour we will assess the patient again even the, uh, uh, whether the patient has a good pain relief and if the patient doesn't have good pain relief we have to evaluate again and maybe we have to increase the dose or we change the the medicine that we will have and we also have to make a report about the pain of the patient and record in the medical record in our hospital we will ask the patient about their pain their pain uh, uh, every one hour in the 24 hours and then we will uh, assess uh, we will evaluate for tomorrow morning and we will uh, make the formula for the pain treatment of this patient patient with cancer may have a number of fears about their pain and sometimes they don't they don't want to take uh, any medicine because they have a bad uh, story about the side effect of the medicine that they take and some of the patient have the anxiety and depression patient with anxiety and depression will have the uh, uh, 
have uh, this more severe pain than the that actually they have and don't forget to always discuss about the management of their pain with the patient and their families we have to explain why they have this pain and what medicine that will give that we will give and actually and all, of course what is the the benefit that will they will have if they take this medicine and the patient with cancer pain should be encouraged to be active participants in the management of their own pain it means we know the term about the patient self uh, control of pain so they can choose their medicine they can choose uh, the time that we need that they need the medicine and they also can decide which medicine that they think it work for their pain so this is how we treat the patient with cancer pain and this point uh, from the research uh, are the problem that also that always uh, happen to the patient with cancer pain treatment okay. for the pain assessment actually we ask the patient about intensity i think we also do this and the etiology we have to define what is the cause of the pain in this patient uh, and then the type is a uh, whether it is uh, neuropathic pain, nociceptive pain, or mixed pain, or maybe bone pain. We know that for the um, cancer pa patient, uh, bone is the maybe the most common site for the metastatic, and the patient with bone pain will very very um, suffer of the pain and even they also have the risk for the fracture and the paralysis and then we also assess the medication uh, which is what is uh, whether the patient has a good relief with the medication that we gave at the time or maybe if the patient don't have the good relief it will change the medicine or maybe we will change the root of the root for the medicine actually we have to know that not every type of pain in patient with cancer is related to the tumor it can be the uh, simultaneous pain maybe we, patient has a big pain because of radical because of the degenerative problem or it can be the patient has the pain because of the cancer yeah not every type of pain perceived by oncological patient can be considered and defined automatically as cancer pain so be, be, be careful sometimes if patient came to us with the history of cancer we will judge the patient oh this patient has a cancer pain but for in my uh, clinical practice in my experience actually uh, the patient come to me with the pain moderate to severe pain we don't know at all that actually patient has a cancer even the patient also don't know that uh, they have the cancer but after we assess the patient we do the evaluation we know that actually the pain that come with the low back pain actually caused by the cancer or uh, actually patient has the cancer pain therefore in oncological patients presenting with pain it is very important to specify if the pain perceived is caused by the tumor related to the treatment or to other comorbidities in order to be able to provide the necessary treatment so uh, we have to decide yeah to specify that the pain perceived is caused by the tumor or related to the treatment or to other comorbidities we know that chemotherapy will induce the pain also uh, usually it is the neuropathy pain and the operat uh, the operative procedure also 
can induce the pain in the patient with the cancer uh, pain. This is the cancer related pain. Uh, uh, there are two classification of cancer related pain. One is causes related. So there is infection maybe because uh, there is infection of the tumor or area of the body. Tumor related. I think it is the most common nervous nervous system that involved by the tumor or um, infiltrating by the cancer cells and it can be related to the bone or visceral or the mucosa and for the treatment related it can be caused by surgery radiation therapy chemotherapy and in or interventional procedures so if the patient with the pain if patient uh, with the cancer pain we have to evaluate what is the cause of pain whether it is has a relation with the tumor nervous system bone visceral or mucosa or whether it has a relation with the surgery radiation therapy chemotherapy or interventional procedures and this is type of cancer pain patient with the cancer pain can has uh any type of this pain it can be from the nociceptive pain or inflammatory pain it can be the neuropathic pain mixed pain mixed pain we know that it is the combination between nociceptive neuropathic and nociplastic pain or it can be from the bone pain so this is the the most common type of cancer pain in our patient nociceptive, neuropathic, mixed pain, and bone pain. Now, this is what I want to show uh, you about the ladder principle of the WHO for the treatment of cancer pain. The five essential concepts in the WHO approach to drug therapy of cancer pain are actually, uh, originally, we just still have three three ladder by the uh, by the mouse by the clock and by the ladder so actually we assess patient for this three um, approach by the mouse yeah by the clock we assess we evaluate the patient maybe every one hour every two hours or by the ladder by the ladder it means we uh, assess the intensity of pain of the patient and it is very very individually and we have to give an attention attention to the detail but i try to add other uh, approach that very very important also which is by the type and by the etiology so if you want to assess the patient with the cancer pain we have to do some approach we have to define the type the etiology and the root of the meds the time to give the medicine and to evaluate and the ladder uh, that we assess for the intensity of the pain now maybe we talk a bit about the opioid for cancer pain yeah uh, Actually, in many, many centers of cancer pain, we still use the opioid. Yeah. Opioid is still the cornerstone of cancer pain treatment. But this is what we want to introduce or maybe we want to share about uh, we try to decrease the using of opioid for the cancer pain treatment yeah however the role in the treatment has been evolving largely due to the a growing understanding of their adverse effects associated with chronic use so we know for the chronic use of opioid 
uh, we will face the new problem. It could be the tolerance, hyperalgesia, dependency, or addiction. So that's why we try to to make the patient not have to um, take opioid in the high dose or not have to take the opioid for a long time, especially for the non-palliative cancer pain patient. What, what is the meaning of non-palliative? The patient still can go for work. The patient still have maybe five years survival rate. It is not including to the palliative group of patient. We, uh, we agree, we give the opioid to the palliative patient, but maybe we try not to use opioid for the non-palliative patient with the cancer. We know that many cancer patients and cancer survivors require chronic opioid therapy or COT. Yeah, COT defined as greater than three months. Every patient that should take opioid for more than three months, three months, uh, mm -hmm. we, we call uh, as the COT patient or chronic opioid therapy patient, which has been associated with the increased risk of endocrinopathy, depression, sleep disorder, breathing, impaired wound healing, substance use disorder or substance abuse, and cognitive impairment. So that's why we try not to use uh, opioid in the high dose or in regular days. Mm -hmm. Nociceptive pain in cancer pain. So we know that some of patients, actually nociceptive is more prominent in hematological cancer patients and they have uh, different pain syndromes. 56% with a diagnosed, diagnosed as deep somatic pain, 15% has a superficial somatic pain, 14% with the visceral pain, 7% as neuropathic and 8% with the mixed pain. This is the, the most common type of patient with hematological malignancies. They have nociceptive pain, pure nociceptive pain with the type of deep somatic, superficial, and visceral. This is some, uh, some meta-analysis for the non-opioid analgesic in palliative medicine that they use the enzyme why they use enzyme? Because they uh, classify, classify the patient into the nociceptive pain patient. Yeah. Some of uh, research found that COX-2 is uh, have the role for the cancer pain, but actually I do some literature searching for the patient with bone pain the nociceptive pain we, we, we can treat with natrium diclofenac. So different kind of pain, uh, even the type of pain is the same, but the, uh, the drug of choice is can be different. Now, we go for the neuropathic pain, cancer pain. Actually, because maybe I'm a neurolog, so we, also, we always assess the neuropathic pain in patient with pain and also with the cancer pain. Okay. Standard cancer neuropathic pain, it happens because of the direct infection and damage to the nerve, or it can be because of the paraneoplastic neuropathies. But we know that there is a new type of cancer related neuropathic pain it, uh, for the post chemotherapy patient as, uh, as the will have the axonal degeneration and demyelinization and cancer induced bone pain usually uh, i have uh, some of uh, some of my college that is uh, the surgeon maybe the urology the orthopedic the digestive but we also deal with the urology actually they all they also always uh, reward the patient with bone pain because of the metastatic uh, Carcin, uh, prostate carcinoma. Actually, um, about 80% of patients with prostate carcinoma will have 
a metastatic to the bone and the patient will have the cancer induced bone pain and uniquely actually patient with CIBP not just have inflammatory pain but they also have neuropathic pain so that's what was what some why some of uh, clinician uh, fail to recognize neuropathic pain in the bone pain then they just give the bisphosphonate or send the patient for the therapy or give the morphine actually patient uh, dominantly have the neuropathic component that's why we should give the anti-neuropathic pain this is the etiology of pain in cancer patient and we can see in all the cancer pain patient they will have the direct effect of cancer about 76 percent but neuropathic pain patient has a portion about 64 percent cancer treatment because uh, uh, the pain that caused by cancer treatment with the neuropathic pain tape is about 20 percent indirect effect with the neuropathic pain about 4% and comorbid condition 12%. So we know in all etiology of cancer pain patient, uh, the neuropathic pain always there. So that's what we want to, to share about. Don't forget to assess the neuropathic pain. Okay. How to assess the neuropathic pain? Uh, actually, neuropathic pain mechanism and symptom is really exist in cancer pain patient, especially in advanced cancer. And the type of pain is mix of inflammatory and neuropathic pain or mechanism. Yeah. So we have to recognize, we have to define whether this patient have pain of predominantly neuropathic origin. Yeah, we can use some of screening tools, lungs, the N4, pain detect. Yeah. Uh, in my hospital, we use the N4 and pain detect. Mm -hmm. And now we uh, develop uh, the, the new uh, tools that can screening the, the type of pain, neuropathic, nociceptive, and also centralized pain so we want to help the doctor to recognize the type of the pain that patient has with just one screening tools so one questionnaire can recognize nociceptive neuropathic or centralized pain and if the patient has more than one type of pain we can uh, character we can classificate the patient into the mixed pain patient this is uh, 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 literature uh, original article about efficacy of anti-neuropathic pain like amitriptyline, gabapentin and pragabalin in neuropathic cancer pain actually uh, the, the, ex the expert already made many research about neuropathic pain in cancer pain but uh, we don't know why, in, actually in my country, uh, some of us uh, don't apply the, the screening tools for neuropathic pain in all of the patients with the cancer pain. So we can see that here, the mean change, the, the higher mean change is happened in the pregabalin using of, for the treatment of uh, neuropathic pain in cancer pain. Now, we also <laughs> do a research, Dr. Castro, it is in 2019. We research uh, about the effectiveness of anti-neuropathic pain in the cancer patient in our hospital. And this is the result. So we found that about 50%, 50 patients or 70.4 of patient, percent patient has neuropathic pain and with nociceptive only about 30 percent so we uh, we report that 
most of our patient actually has the neuropathic pain, our cancer pain patient. This is the result. And you can see that gabapentin and parastamol is the most effective treatment for our patient. Okay. Not the opioid. So we give the opioid to the patient. Patient not have a good relief because opioid not the drug of choice for the neuropathic pain. And we can see that 70% of patients with cancer pain actually has the neuropathic pain. So that's why we have to combine gabapentin, opioid, or parastamol. Uh, the patient will have a very good relief. You can see from this table, using of gabapentin plus opioid and plus paracetamol uh, will have the pain reduction about 5.4 uh, 5 point. Very significant. Okay. How about cancer-induced bone pain? CIBP is understood as a complex pain state with nociceptive, but also inflammatory and neuropathic characteristic. We know that bone periosteum, bone marrow, and also bone matrix are highly innervated tissues that contain a network of both sensory and sympathetic neurons. So that's why in patient with bone pain will have the uh, neuropathic pain. Yeah. Given to the biology of bone pain, the use of adjuvant analgesic such as gabapentinoid or antidepressant seems prudent as many patients with ABP have neuropathic features. Gabapentin blocks the process of central sensitization, most likely by modifying activation of the spinal microglia and release of pro-inflammatory cytokine which enhance pain transmission. Uh, some of one of reports said that in a small series, gabapentin has been shown to reduce breakthrough pain caused by bone metastasis. Okay. Cancer therapy induced pain. So we can see here that cancer therapy can induce the pain in the patient with cancer and the Neuropathic pain always there. Okay, now this is using of anticonvulsant according to the type of cancer pain. Patient with nociceptive or inflammatory pain will need NSAID or steroid to decrease the pain. But if the patient also has neuropathic pain, mixed pain, or bone pain, we should give the anticonvulsant. Uh, such as pregabalin or gabapentin. This is how the flow chart, uh, this is the flow chart that we use in my hospital for diagnosis and treatment process of cancer pain with the mixed pain. Patient come to us, we assess the pain, we, we define the pain score, but the most important, we do the neuropathic pain assessment with the pain detect. If the patient has no neuropathic pain or unlikely neuropathic pain, we don't decide yet the patient with the have the inflammatory pain. We will evaluate the patient for 24 hours, but we give the medicine, not the anti-neuropathic pain, and then we identify the high score of pain and define the type of this pain by using pain detect. So it means in 24 hours at 7 o'clock, I ask the patient, Oh, how about your pain? It's very severe, doctor. I have uh, 8 uh, by 10. So we will assess whether the score, the pain score that the patient has, the high pain score the patient has, is the neuropathic pain or not. We do the assessment by using pain detect. And then if the patient is neuropathic pain or ambiguous neuropathic pain, the scale is about uh, 12 to 19 is ambiguous, but more than 19, definitely neuropathic pain. We, we also do the evaluation for 24 hours and we will identify the high score of the pain and define the type of this pain by using pain detect. So we have the, the history of pain of the patient in 24 hours. 
and then we define the type of pain on timely basis. So in eight o'clock, patient has a pain, a dominant inflammatory pain, but also have neuropathic pain. And but in seven p.m., patient actually has just has the neuropathic pain. So that's what we do for our patient, for our cancer pain patient. We give the medicine according to the time of dominant pain and we do the re-evaluation re for the next 24 hours. After that, we can set up the treatment program for the patient. So that's what we do in my hospital. And this is the algorithm. <laughs> I mean, we can see it clearly, Dr. Castro. Okay. Yes, uh, yeah. <laughs> In cancer pain patient, we assess the pain intensity with the NRS, NRS, numeric rating scale or visual analog scale. And then we define the pain mechanism, whether it is neuropathic or non-neuropathic by using pain detect, the N4. And then we classify patient into neuropathic pain patient, mixed pain, bone pain, or inflammatory pain patient. Patient could be has more than one type of pain, and for the bone pain, actually, patient always have the neuropathic, mixed pain, and inflammatory pain. This is the, patient, the characteristic of patient with bone pain, and we will give the medicine according to that type of pain, and then oh, I can see okay. We will do pain if the uh, evaluation of pain improvement, and we will maybe the grammar is evaluation pain of the pain time by time. And don't forget, patient with cancer pain sometimes has the breakthrough pain. It is a different uh, approach. So patient has we have did we know that patient with cancer pain actually has two type uh, of pain background pain and breakthrough pain background pain uh, it is the pain that patient has after we give the medication patient has a score three four two three four and breakthrough pain is the pain that suddenly increase uh, in between the background pain then the patient with breakthrough pain usually we give the opioid the strong opioid but here in our hospital we will assess what type of pain the patient have. If patient has the neuropathic pain, we will give patient gabapentin, but the dose is quite high. It's about nine, uh, 600 to 800. And patient will have the good pain relief with this uh, medication. Still, we need the opioid. The patient may need the opioid, and we can add the opioid for our patient with the breakthrough pain. That's what we do in our hospital. Now, this is the step ladder of WHO for the cancer pain. Uh, step one, step two, step three, patient with the, with the uh, slight pain, we can give non-opioid. With the moderate pain, you can give weak opioid and uh, add some of adjuvant. And with the uh, severe pain, you can give strong opioid. But we need we make uh, some modification for the patient with the cancer pain. You can see here. I can remove this. For the step one, that patient has the score of pain from one to three, we can give non-opioid and side uh, parastamol, but don't forget, even with the, uh, what do we call for the ringan? <laughs> mild pain, sorry, I forget how to say in English for the mild, mild, mild pain. Actually, we should give the, give the patient the anticonvulsant. Why? If you found the patient even with the mild pain, but patient has neuropathic pain, we should give the anticonvulsant. 
the same thing we do for the step two of pain. You can give big opioid. Usually we use tramadol in uh, my hospital and don't forget to give anticonvulsant or anti neuropathic if patient has the neuropathic pain. Even for the severe pain, we still have to give uh, neuropathic pain with combined with the opioid. Okay. I'm struggling to move this one. Okay. Oh, finally, <laughs> we come to the conclusion, Dr. Castro. So as we know, as I said before, the main barrier to optimal effective pain relief with inpatient with cancer pain is inadequate assessment of pain. Uh, therefore, pain assessment should take place at regular intervals following the start of any new treatment and at each new report of pain. Anticonvulsant gabapentinoid takes the important role in the management of cancer pain and can be used in any steps and any type of cancer pain. So that is our conclusion for today. Okay, Dr. Castro, I think that's all my uh, presentation. That was a very nice lecture. Uh, can we have one quest, one or two questions for you? Yes, thank uh, you. Pash, 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 you have a question. Go ahead, Pash. Yes, Dr. Tim. Dr. Desi, it was such a clear and a very nice lecture. Congratulations. Thank you so much. Very interesting with this uh, topic. <laughs> it was great. It was, just, it was so well mapped out. Thank you, Dr. Desi. Dr. Desi, I have a question. In terms of, um, because you mentioned GABA, gabapentin as a medication, correct? Wait, I will turn off. Can you hear me better? Uh, I cannot hear you. Can you hear me better, Dr. Desi? Okay, I can hear you clearly now. Yeah, um, is there also a role of pregabalin or do you use pregabalin in your funding as an alternative for the neuropathic pain? Mm. Maybe. Uh -huh. Do you use also for gabalin yes. in the case of yes? Because uh, I think it has for me in my experience it just has an added uh, added effect of drowsiness where where other patients with cancer pain right cannot sleep yeah. very well. Yes. So how do you use the for, for, do you also combine it for gabalin with other medication? Thank you, Doctor Yes. Okay. Thank you for the question, Dr. Paz. Uh, in my country, we use gabapentin for the public hospital patient or for the national insurance patient because gabapentin is covered by the national insurance. But for the private patient, uh, me use pregabalin <laughs> because pregabalin not covered by the national insurance. But for me, pregabalin is better actually the side effect is uh, mild, yeah, uh, compared to the gabapentin. But I usually I always combine pregabalin with other medicine such as steroid for the cancer pain if patient ha need the steroid, and maybe inside, and some time I use weak opioid like tramadol. But sometimes I have to use strong opioid. But even I use strong or weak opioid, I always use pregabalin or gabapentin for the cancer pain patient. If the patient has the neuropathic pain component. That's that's yeah, very nice. More. Okay, one more question, Pash. Yes, of I course. Have more. I have more questions. <laughs> one question is, Dr. Desi, um, uh, my, uh, the other one is about bone pain. Do you ever use anti-resorptive med bone uh, medications for your bone pain? Uh, like those for osteoporosis because sometimes don't they also give you pain relief? So is there a place for using those medications in bone cancer pain? Yes, very good question. Excellent. <laughs> I think you know well about the cancer pain patient pass. <laughs> yes. With the patient with bone pain, we use the bisphosphonate 
that is usually used for the osteoporosis patient that help the patient but it sometimes we still need a uh, pregabalin or gabapentin if actually patient with bone pain has more than one type of pain nociceptive inflama or inflammatory and neuropathy pain and also bone pain so if patient just have a bone pain no neuropathy component we can use bisphosphonate but according to our experience about 80% of our bone pain patient with the advanced cancer pain will need also the anti neuropathic pain bisphosphonate is very helpful for the bone pain patient but we need the uh, anti neuropathic pain also for the optimal pain relief thank you fast <laughs> Pash, you still have two questions. I have one more okay. question, Dr. Yes. Sorry. <laughs> I really like your lecture on pain. I have one, one last question, Dr. Yes. In terms of cancer pain, the U.S. has been using you know, some essential oils to also help um, in terms of uh, emotional uh, and psychological effects of the essential oils for pain. In your institution, have you tried doing or using also natural patting approach like essential oils in managing cancer pain? Thank you, Dr. Des. Um, to be honest, uh, I don't have that experience clinically, <laughs> but some of my patients uh, do this kind of treatment. Uh, but if the patient uh, come to the physiotherapist, yeah, uh, come to the some of our doctor uh, propose this kind of therapy with the essential oil. Uh, I don't have any experience. Maybe Pas can teach me how <laughs> essential oil for the cancer pain patient. <laughs> I don't have any experience about it. Because I don't have time to to explore essential oil by diffuser. Do you mean we use diffuser? So for the uh, as the perfume, like yeah, it's like a it's like it, it also affects like uh, some form of relaxation against anxiety. I have, I have a, you know, it's they say that because as you said, it's a multifactorial type of pain. I so agree. they also yes, and so they also say that emotions play a big role as to how you manage pain, and it's a behavioral thing also. So I was just wondering if you have had that experience in your own practice. But thank I you, Dr. I will read the literature and I will do to my patient. Thank you. Yeah, thank yeah. you, Dr. Desi. I have just one question, Dr. Desi. Yeah. Uh, when do, when do you consider an interventional procedure for cancer patients? I will consider the pain intervention with if our non-intervention treatment is failed. So we will consider the pain intervention, but we have to be careful. We don't do this for the severe patient, yeah, because. No, in my uh, in my place, any intervention is just cause of <laughs> so, full, but in patient with has good um, general condition, we did, we consider to do the intervention uh, if our treatment is failed to give the pain relief for the patient. Usually we can do ganglion impar blocks. Uh, do uh, the neurolytic, but do by anesthesiologist for the neurolytic. And uh, we put the catheter for the patient where they can uh, do their pain control analgesia by themselves. Epidural, just like that. Okay, that's what kind of treatment uh, intervention we do. Thank you very much. Opas, you have one last question. 
Okay. Oh no, no, no. I was, I was just wondering the intervention. Okay, so that is regardless of the stage of the cancer, Doctor Dennis. So even if the patient is in the, you know, advanced stage, they can still do interventional pain management. Correct, yeah. Doctor Dennis. It is just, it is just epidural. Maybe <laughs> we don't do any radio frequency or any other that more invasive. <laughs> we use the catheter. So patient can do their uh, their self uh, pain control. Doctor Desti, thank, thank you, you very much for that lecture. And I know you are very tired. You've been working the whole time. You've seen your patients. Yeah. <laughs> and then you, you still find time to to share your knowledge to us. We really appreciate your time and your expertise. And hoping to see you soon in oh, the future. Of course. Yeah. Yes, and uh, also, I, just, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I really, really want to go, go back to Manila. <laughs> Actually, yeah. almost every every year I come to Manila, right? From yeah. 2017, last yeah, that, time I came in 2019. Yes. Right? Yeah. Doctor Desti's uh, second home is the Philippines, actually. Yeah. Oh, yes. <laughs> and Taiwan, Taiwan also. <laughs> Dr. Desi is uh, writing her chapter on. Uh, we are we are putting up an advanced chronic neuropathic pain book. Yes. For the be, children. Yeah. My chapter is for the pain for the children, right? Yes, and, and uh, she's writing a very nice yeah. chapter on the pain for the children. Yes. And hopefully, it'll be off in the press uh, late this year. So thank, thank you very you. much, uh, Dr. Desi, thank for you. all your contributions. Uh, thank you, uh, other college. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We will we'll post this on the YouTube, so more more people will learn from you, oh, Dr. Desi. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah hopefully. <laughs> thank you very much.